another Sharp Moves video. Uh, today, before we get started, I really want to encourage everyone to, if you haven't yet, subscribe, like the video. Um, if you do like the video, uh, turn on all notifications, smash all that good stuff, because um, it really helps support the channel and it helps move the, the channel forward. Uh, today, we've got a 2021 Mustang Mach-E. When you hear Mustang, you must think, um, you know, you think Ford, you think V8, you think big muscle car. Um, this is not your everyday Ford. This is not your everyday Mustang. Um, this isn't a coupe. It's not a convertible. It doesn't have a twin turbo. It doesn't have a V8 even. It's got no engine. It's a complete all electric SUV. Uh, today we're gonna do a full in-depth review of the car. Go around, look at all the styling cues. Uh, look at the amazing tech inside of it and see if it's really, you know, if it really lives up to the Mustang sort of name and, you know, worth wearing a Mustang badge. All right, let's get to it. All right, guys, so without further ado, let's take a look at this Mustang Mach 4E. So, like every vehicle, you know, there are various sort of trim levels um, to every sort of vehicle. Um, the high-end one should be sort of noted right off the bat. Mustang Mach, um, Mach GT. Uh, it goes zero to 60 in 3.5 seconds. It's got all the premium finishings. Um, you know, it's a little bit lighter. It's got, a, I think, a shorter shorter range on it. Um, but it's performance-based, so it's, it's very, very quick. Um, the curb weight of these vehicles is anywhere between 4,300 pounds and 4,900 pounds. My tester here is the premium model. Um, I'd say one or two down. It's sort of GT at the top, California model. Gives you a couple of the little sort of accents on the outside. Premium is one down with a nice interior I'll show you. Um, and the nice sort of paint job. This is infinite blue um, with the gray, 18 inch carbonized gray aluminum wheels. Um, and then I believe there's a trim level one down from that, the sort of basic one. Uh, both, uh, sorry, excuse me, all vehicles uh, come in either all wheel drive or real wheel drive. I believe this one is rear wheel drive. And when you drive it, you can really feel sort of the power coming from the, from the back wheels. It's really, really cool. Um, yeah, really, really good car. This one goes zero to 60 in about 4.8 seconds. Um, that being said, it's it's very, very quick sort of off the line. Um, this one's retailing for 49,000 and change, just a little over $49,000. You can get them for about 42,895 plus tax, I believe. That's that's the entry level sort of starting point. And then the additions, you know, the, the sort of add-ons are, are plentiful from there, like every vehicle. Uh, it should be noted that here in Pennsylvania, at least, um, and I'm sure a lot of different states in the in the country offer a big tax rebate for any EV vehicles. And this one, obviously being Ford, has a lot of incentives. So I, I believe it's $7,500 off the, the sticker price um, if for, for purchasing this vehicle, uh, give or take a little bit, I think, depending on the model you get and everything. Um, one of the big things that I notice about this vehicle is not only the styling, the styling is very, very cool on it, um, but mostly the tech. Uh, obviously it doesn't have, you know, any big sort of engine in it. Uh, it doesn't have an engine at all. Uh, so very focused on technology. Um, and one of the biggest things is the ability to control your whole vehicle, you know, windows down, windows up, start, stop of the engine, unlock, lock, everything from your phone. So this is the key here, okay? But most people, I guess Ford recognizes this, most people aren't even gonna use the, the key, right? It's so much easier just to sort of have your, pull out your phone, your, your phone is your key, you have your phone with you every day anyways, just pop that phone out and it'll do everything you need for it. Ford Pass, it's the ability to have all the functionality of the key uh, right from your cell phone. Okay, so this, this not only does it give you the ability to start the vehicle, unlock, lock, um, you know, windows up, windows down, um, you can turn on the heated steering wheel, you can, you can turn on the climate controls, um, but it also tells you your charge level. And you can see I'm getting pretty low. It's almost time to do my first, uh, 
my first charge up, which will be a bit of an experience. Uh, and then if you can go a little bit deeper here, obviously if you push charge, view chargers, that's gonna show you all of your, all of your nearby sort of charging potential, okay? So 3.1 miles away, 3.6 miles, there's one in King of Prussia. This is all Electrify America, there's EVGO. You can obviously filter it out by certain things. If you're only looking for EVGO, which I think is more Ford's network, you can do that. So just going back to the vehicle, um, you can do a whole bunch of things. It, uh, it, it's always kind of showing, it's always acting as a security sort of feature as well. If a door opens, it prompts. If you're not by the vehicle, it prompts you. This, this, door, this door opened, passenger door was open at this time. Are you good with that? Are you aware of that? Or do you want to file like a, um, do you want to, do you want to, you know, make an official sort of complaint? Not a complaint, but, you know, you know, trigger something that lets Ford know or, you know, I'm not sure exactly how it works, but it, it, it sends a notification to someone or, you know, it's it, it acts as a bit of a security feature, which is cool. I, I think I gotta look into that one a little bit more. Shows you your journeys, everywhere you've traveled in the last little while, your tire pressure, shows you your recommended tire pressure, gives you all your Wi-Fi sort of options, right? It kind of acts as like a Wi-Fi hotspot if you want. Um, yeah, just a bunch of little sort of features, right? It shows what you have in your glove box. You can keep all your information, all your, um, you know, your insurance information, any collision assistance, all that sort of stuff is there. It allows you to add multiple vehicles if you want. So really, really cool sort of feature. Um, vehicle status, you know, is all good. It's showing me departure time. It shows my uh, my current address. It's just a really, really good app. It's got a lot of good information here. Go to map, again, that's all your, your charging features. Go home, it's got a nice uh, picture of the exact sort of car that I have here for the uh, for the week in infinite uh, blue with a nice sort of, you know, chrome, what do they call them, gray aluminum um, uh, rims. Uh, really, really smart car, recognizing when you're getting closer to it. Um, sort of prepares itself for you gets the technology sort of turned on it's essentially a computer if you can see just below there it's got some active arrows it's got some um, sort of intakes there that open at, at speed uh, I'm not sure exactly what speed but I think uh, as as it becomes a necessity a need um, the car you know obviously is smart and turns on and uh, and gives you that extra airflow to the batteries um, one really really cool thing here well I mean some people might think it's it's not cool but um, if you're a Ford lover, you may not like this. The Mustang, this, this one in particular, and I think this carries on with the, you know, the Mustang GTs and the, the big, you know, V8 gas powered vehicles. There's not one Ford logo, not one Ford badging anywhere on this vehicle. So let's just take a quick look. There's our first Mustang logo. It's on all four wheels. Come to the front where you normally have a Ford badge. There's a nice prancing horse again, right? Coming around, coming around. There's a Mach 4 E, or E4, excuse me, just telling you sort of it's the Mach 4, it's the electric, uh, and telling you where it sort of fits in the in the branding or in the, the trim level. Coming to the back, another another prancing horse, another Mustang. So obviously, you know, Mustang or Ford, obviously, you know, they, they offer this as a premium car. They know they're Mustang lovers may you know may not want to be i don't want to say not associated with ford but you know they they more want to keep that aside and they more want to enhance the fact that this is a mustang and there's a lot of a lot of evolution a lot of a lot of pride a lot of sort of um technology and, and history that goes history is what i'm looking for history that goes into um to the sort of ford mustang so really really cool um, if we get a little bit closer here, you can see that the the door is actually very, very strange. There's no doors on it. It has this nice seamless sort of, you know, look that runs right down the the sort of side of the core, which is, which is beautiful. If you get a little closer, you'll see that there are a bunch of numbers here, right? So you can set a password if you like. So you don't need your phone. You don't need a key. You don't need anything. Um, Ford typically does that with their, you know, with their whole model range. That's, that's kind of a Ford thing. Um, but this essentially is the handle. 
It's a small little handle with a push button. So obviously I have the key fob in my pocket. Um, I just give it a little push, boom, it pops out. What's really cool is once it pops out a little bit, you can't push the door closed. I can push it as hard as I want. I can't, it's a little bit hot, but can't push it closed. It has to pull this way first to release and then it can be closed. Okay, so we just give it a close. Boom, back in there, good to go. Same sort of idea with the with the back, right? Obviously there's no pull, just kind of opens to you. Now it's your job to tuck your hand in the side and pull her open. Okay, so we'll get to the interior shortly, but let me just close this down. I think a lot of people will probably ask, is this thing gonna, gonna impede sort of, you know, the aerodynamics of the car, the, the range inevitably of the car? Um, Ford tells us that this actually is in line with the mirrors. So all the air that's being blocked by the mirror is essentially coming around here, right? Thus, this piece not preventing aerodynamics, not preventing range in the slightest. This computer and, and I think a lot of, or excuse me, <laughs> this vehicle and a lot of EVs going forward are, they feel like computers. They're very, very, you know, very, very smart. Um, and you can tell that the companies are now putting a lot of focus on, on the tech side of things. Um, and they can, they can do an awful lot with it. It's very, very cool. So let's uh, just quickly touch on the EV sort of, you know, gas opener. Here we go, just give it a little pop. Very, very similar to a gas tank. You just give it a little push, boom, it opens up. There's your charging port. In my next videos, I'm gonna do, uh, I'm gonna do a full sort of charge. I'm gonna go to a station. I'm gonna show you the accessibility, how easy it is to, to access a station um, and how quickly the, the, uh, it charges up. Uh, Ford says zero to 80% is done in about 45 minutes, which is very, very quick. 80 to 100% takes a substantially longer, about, about two hours apparently. So I think most people, if you're not charging overnight at home, most people are getting just, just you know, coming maybe to a Whole Foods or a grocery store and just, just getting a little bit of juice, getting 80%, enough to kind of get you on with, with really wherever you need to go and then, uh, and then shooting out of there. So coming around to the front here, obviously guys remember we're in a electric vehicle. So instead of the power plant being at the front, a big engine, we've got storage, more storage. What does Porsche call this? A frunk. Okay, so nothing crazy. You know, I got my, my some of my extra camera gear and stuff like that. A few little extra little spaces here to put a few little things, you know, a couple other little groceries and stuff. And then it's really all about fluids here, right? Washer fluid, um, that's really about it. All right, a couple fans, a little bit of air areas for, um, for air to sort of escape. And that's about it, but extra little storage, I like it. Taking a quick look here at the nice sort of sharp looking LEDs, you get this nice sort of, you know, one, two, three, four lights with a nice sort of strip that runs right down there, almost like a C-class kind of look. It's pretty sharp looking. I love the styling of the of the Mustang here. I love how, you know, you can do a lot with the EV because it's, you know, it doesn't have an engine, so it doesn't need as much cooling through the front. So they've taken advantage of of it, obviously with that nice little sort of wrap around thing there. The Mustang badging has been illuminated. The car, obviously, the batteries because it's been on a little bit is starting to heat up a little bit. So intelligently, the car has opened these dams here to get a little bit more um, air through. So just just from a styling uh, standpoint, I think the I think Ford has done a really, really good job with this uh, with this vehicle. It's a, it's a nice looking car. Take a look at the back design here, how Ford has done the three sort of bang, bang, bang. Obviously when you're when you're about to put your, your back uh, signal on, the lights very similar to a normal Ford Mustang go bang, 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 bang. They just kind of, they're, they're moving this way across which is very very cool love the design language of that all right coming across just looks really really nice nice coupe design another rear brake light back up here and then you got your big fin for um for all your technology and your wi-fi and everything uh to be connected um obviously your lane keep assist right there you can see that you got your signal here, light, worked into your, your mirrors. Those retract 
to the right, nice and tight to the to the door as you uh, as you move away from the vehicle. All right, so coming around the back here, let me grab out the key. Okay, so obviously you can take a look there. It's two clicks to open. One, two. Trunk opens up for me nicely. Everything's automatic. Lots and lots of space in here. Right away, as soon as I get in there, I can see that that's an automatic close. It's got a couple lights here for when you're when you're maybe your wife or someone is moving groceries or moving things at night, right? Gives you a little bit more visibility. Um, clearance to try and get some stuff up very low. It almost sits. It almost sits down. Like it's like kind of, you know, the entry point is very low. Um, and then if you can see that, it's got an almost like a hatchback sort of design. It's very cool. It's obviously an SUV, but it, it's got a lot, a lot of storage here. Let's see if we can get underneath this. Lifting that up, you got all your sort of, you know, your your spare tire, your, um, what else do we got? You know, tire pressure stuff. Um, all the little knickknacks, car cover, little goodies from, uh, from Ford, in case you get stranded on the side of the road. Uh, so very cool, good space. You got your 12 volt sort of battery there. Let's close that down. A little, little hook for any clothing that you need. All right, let's give that a close with our automatic. Boom, one touch, closed. Very nice. Let's take a look at the back seat here and see what kind of space we're working with. So, you know, even though it is an SUV, it's a it's a performance, you know, sort of sporty SUV. So, you know, lots of space, but nothing crazy. So you can see that the nice leathers are, are carried out through, or carried on through the back here. Um, you got a nice little window back there to take a look out of, right? Your visibility is pretty decent, right? Going from there, straight back through, not too bad. All right, two cup holders there if you need for your, your passengers in the back seat. Uh, you got your climate controls as well as USB-C and USB, right? Very nice. A little bit of storage areas there on both sides. And a decent size, decent amount of foot room. My seat's all the way back, so, you know, let me take a look here. I'll jump in, jump in and give it a little flip, right? So I'm sitting in here pretty, pretty comfortably, right? I'm six feet, all right? That's pretty comfortable. Let me try and just focus the the light. Yeah, not too bad, I like it. Yeah, all right, so you get two adults back here, no problem, no problem, very comfortably. So as we move into the interior here, guys, uh, I just wanted to talk about range. Obviously, you know, the lower end range, um, there's a bit of a window, 211 miles is the low end, uh, about 305 mile range on the high end. And again, that, that, that depends on which model you're buying, um, you know, how much you're willing to spend, options, etc. cetera. Um, but you have the capability of 305 miles. Um, I believe that, you know, obviously as, as the, the performance comes into play a little bit more I think the mileage or the range tends to go down a little bit so um, take that into consideration when you're when you're making your purchase uh, but going into the uh, to the interior uh, beautiful interior I was actually really really impressed when I first got into this car so as you can see Mustang on the door sills done really nicely no Ford badging here still staying true to what I was saying right coming to the steering wheel there don't see a Ford badge it's all Mustang again right nice sort of you know soft touch leathers here right doesn't feel cheap at all feels actually really really good quality this is a premium um, trim level so it, it should be sort of you know a little bit higher end uh, one thing i did notice is that the surround sound or the speaker system here although it does sound pretty good it doesn't it's i don't i don't think that it's the premium model it, it's not labeled i don't see bose i don't see harman Kardon, whatever whatever um ford tends to use i don't i don't see any of that um that being said you know if it's the basic this is a premium model so i imagine it comes with something a little bit more special but i don't i don't necessarily see it um and i don't see a ton of of speakers around um but again, it's it does it definitely does sound nice. So let's let's just get in the car here. And we'll fire it up. 
and you can take a look at the the monstrosity of a screen here in the front console and this is essentially the the nervous system the the brain of the of the car even bigger to be honest than a, than a tesla it's just massive it's actually gorgeous looking and very very easy to use a lot of times you get these these huge sort of you know systems and you're you know you're touching things and you got to touch everything twice and it's you know it's not very user friendly this thing is just bang on it's you know, I want to go somewhere I want to go there take me I want to go to the cameras bunch of different views here right one two three take me there it's it's just it's just very very quick very similar to to sort of an iPhone right very 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 cool so um, one of the big selling points for me on this vehicle, and obviously you're going to see my wife in the next couple of days, she's going to try and drive it. Um, the technology is just, just bang on. Uh, so there's your little sort of, there's your little, um, you know, head, not heads up, but your little sort of, you know, display dial. It's got your range here. I'm down to about 42%. Started the day about one, one hundred fifty miles. And I've kind of depleted a little bit. Uh, so if I close the door here. Right, it'll give me a little readout here. It gives you your miles per hour in, in, in a digital display. It gives you your car. Uh, it's got a bunch of little sensors on it. It's got parking assist, um, as you can see here. Um, it's got valet mode, which is very cool. A lot of times you leave your car to someone, you, you wanna know exactly what's being done with it. Um, so it's it's got that. It's got a little pin and stuff like that. Very, very cool, very cool feature. Um, this one comes with three modes, okay? So engage, let's just let's just go over to engage. We talk about it. It'll show you a little thing. The engage is a balanced drive, fun and engaging, okay? So it's kind of like your, I would call it your, your sport mode. I wouldn't call it your comfort mode in a German car. It's your sport mode. Next one is whisper. Whisper is just a seamless drive, calm and quiet. That's your comfort mode. That's your... You know, I want to call it the wifey mode, but I shouldn't say that because every wife is different. My wife loves the comfort mode. Put it on, engine's not loud, it's quiet, it's calm, it's riding on air. That's what she's after. Now we got the unbridled mode, aka sport plus or race mode, okay? They call it unbridled, exhilarating drive, machine and road align as one. Beautiful. So. My, my rule for myself is I get into a car that has modes. I go down to the most raw, exotic, you know, hardcore mode. I put it into that mode and it stays in that mode for the whole time that I've got it. Um, but you have, you have options, which is what we're after, right? This thing has parking assist as well. If you pull up, you know, to a little, little tight spot and you want a parallel park, you get, you get in position, it'll, it'll recognize that you're in a spot and uh, it'll do all the work for you, which is really, really cool. So let's just quickly look at the design here. Very, very cool design how, you know, Ford has worked the, the air climate control into the dashboard. It's got kind of like a fake sort of carbon fiber, silver, silver carbon fiber along the trim here. Pretty nice, right? I like that, all right? You gotta remember it's, you know, it's a, it's a mid-level, it's not a, you know, exotic, Pre pre it's called a premium, but it's not a German luxury car. So, you know, the fact that they've they've done this very tastefully doesn't look cheap. I think is uh, is a bit of a win. So, I'm impressed with that. Um, just looking up here to the top, you've got all your sort of garage control lights. You've got your you know one tap for for on, two taps to bring them both on. Um, you've got uh, you know your garage. Your garage opener is here. Your garage opener just up there as well. I think that's three different ones you can set. Um, and you get this going on. Hello, hello. You can open that. All right, passes the test. Back over. All right. Pretty high-end uh, mirror. That's what we're seeing in the back. And then. Um, even just the nice sort of gray leather doesn't doesn't the seating doesn't have a lot of bolstering um but the design of it i'm, I'm pretty impressed with it it looks pretty tasteful it looks pretty nice again just just pretty nice not overly done but it but it doesn't look cheap that's the biggest thing i don't want to get in here and, and it looks looks kind of raunchy it doesn't look like quality um the seats do have nice support here they're nice and cushioned but they don't really bolster you sort of here and 
there. There's no real, you know, you're again, you're not in a high performance vehicle. I imagine the GT trim level has probably got a little bit more bolstering, a little bit more sports seats, but um, you know, it, it, it does a good job for what it is. Just taking a look down here, you got your USB ports, right? You know, I think that's USB C and USB. You've got induction charging here for one, two phones. You've got, you know, obviously you're an electric vehicle, so foot on the brake, right? Boom, into reverse. Your camera displays all come up. You can do the, the, the top down display. You can see all around you. You can do the nice back reverse cam. Look at how much I've got here. Look at how much uh, visibility. Uh, you got your neutral setting here, neutral. Put your drive. And then you've got L. Right. I'm gonna say L uh, is lazy. Um, but I don't really know. L is for just lounging. When you're just chilling, you're waiting for your wife to come out, you got the radio on. No, I'm not sure. You guys go in the comments, let me know what that is. Here's your parking assist. Here's your four ways, right? When you're stopping traffic, there's your parking brake. Okay, so let's get into a little bit of, um, a little bit of the, the um, sort of compartments here. So we got a nice little, again, nice cushiony, sort of, you know, decent, decently comfortable, decently quality uh, leathers, right? You pull that up and you could store some stuff here if you wanted to, right? There's a little bit of a gap there, which is kind of cool. It's an interesting concept. I don't know if I would do it that way. Uh, so it seems like a little bit of a waste of space, but you could put some stuff in there. You can pull this up and then you got a whole bunch of, of sort of room in there to put a bunch of stuff, uh, which is cool. Slides closed so you can, um, you can hide everything you got there. Pretty decent, all right? Pretty decent over on the on the on the driver's side and the and the passenger side. You've got nice sort of power windows up and down. That's the reverse, all right? Up and down, very nice. Um, your unlock and lock here again, pretty high quality stuff. There's your mirrors back and forth, all right? Pretty good quality. Feels nice to the touch. A little bit of leather here on the side and then the speaker that we talked about that just kind of looks a little bit cheap um, here you got all your high beams and your your cruise controls and all that sort of stuff Let me see if I get the camera going there. everything you kind of need on the side there you know, this is more air stuff your, your max that that's a button that'll take your your air conditioning to just to max uh, max capacity there's your your steering wheel stock your windshield wipers are on this side um, I like the steering wheel a lot. It's a nice sort of 10 and 2 uh, notches here. It's nice and chunky, right? Gloss black on the bottom. Feels feels solid. Feels really, really sort of, has a good feeling to it. Has a nice grip to it. Nice soft touch uh, leathers on it. You got that badging that you're always looking at, right? This is, this is a premium sort of, you know, a badge. It makes you feel good about what you're in. Um, yeah, it looks pretty good. Yeah, obviously start stop um, for the uh, for the battery. I don't want to say the engine for the uh, for the battery for the for the vehicle's. Uh, we'll say for the for the vehicle the vehicle's brain to turn on. Uh, let's just pull this open here. This is your glove box. Pretty good amount of storage in there. Nothing too crazy, but you can get a bunch of stuff in there. Right, pretty standard. Right. So this is a brand new car, so we got that there. This one's got about, I shouldn't say brand new, it's got about 15,000, 1,500 miles on it. Um, so yeah, it looks pretty good. All right, guys, so that's the review of the, the exterior and the interior of the 2021 uh, Ford Mustang EV Mach 5. Um, I want you to stay tuned. I'm going to be taking this car for a little drive uh, and seeing what it's capable of. Again, it's, it's blistering fast, so I hear, but I want to put it through its paces and, uh, and see, you know, what the suspension is like, what the handling is like, you know, the rideability over curves and over bumps, excuse me, and around curves. Uh, but I would love to hear from you guys. What do you guys think? Is this thing uh, an actual Mustang? It doesn't have the big V8 in it. You know, it's not a coupe. It's not, uh, you know, you're not going to the gas station every 10 seconds. But is it a better thing? Is that a better thing? Um, you know, this is obviously 
the the future for Ford, right? The future of the world. Um, so are you sold or are you not sold? Let me know in the comments. I'm very, very interested uh, to know how everyone feels. Stay tuned to the next video, okay? I'm gonna be getting in the car and giving it a, a real sort of drive um, and putting it, again, putting it through its paces. Um, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe. Uh, if you like what you see and you wanna see more of these videos, uh, like the video, you know, subscribe, hit all, turn on notifications, all that good stuff, uh, and follow the channel, okay? I continue to do a lot of these videos uh, going forward a couple times a week, okay? Look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. Stay tuned, all right, let's go. Put on the brake. Three, two, one, go. Whoa! 60. Underpass. Woo! Uh, I didn't make any sound. Uh.